How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca and for the next three days I am still a final year medical student studying in Canada until my graduation this week and then residency after that. But that means because I'm in my last year, I just wrote the MCCQE1 exam last week, which stands for the Medical Council of Canada qualifying exam number one. This is the Canadian equivalent-ish of the step exams that you would see down in the States. Now, because I just wrote the exam and because in the past I have made a complete breakdown for the step one exam and because a lot of people have asked me for it and some input on this particular topic, what we're gonna be doing today is making what I hope to be the most comprehensive guide that exists on YouTube, going over everything that we could possibly talk about about this exam. We're gonna be talking about scoring, how I studied some resources, what's tested, on the exam according to the official website and a whole bunch of other stuff so it is going to be a long video so what i'm going to do is go ahead and put timestamps all over the video i would highly encourage anyone watching to just jump ahead to whatever section of the video that you're most interested in according to the timestamps below now before we get into it i just want to say that if this video was helpful for you at all and you want to go ahead and leave a like on it that would be greatly appreciated if there's any questions or comments that you want to leave put those down in the comment section because i do try my best to answer everyone in the comment section finally if you want to see more videos from me in residency and beyond, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Now, from the very top, the MCCQE1 was originally the first of two exams. It was a two-parter where the second part of the exam, the MCCQE2, was discontinued. I believe that was last May. As of 2021, there is no MCCQE2 anymore, which means that for the majority of Canadian medical students, we only need to write this exam upon completion of our medical school training before we go ahead and we start residency. Having said that though, Canadian medical graduates are not the only people to go ahead and write this exam and according to the CMA official website their eligibility criteria the people that are allowed to take this exam there's three different categories the first being any student that came from a medical school that was accredited by the committee on accreditation of Canadian medical schools so basically any student from a Canadian medical school the second category is any student from a medical school listed in the world directory of medical schools and identified by a Canada sponsor notes indicating that it is an acceptable medical school in Canada or finally a United States School of Osteopathic Medicine accredited by the American Osteopathic Association. If you're not sure whether or not you are eligible, please go ahead and check that website directly. Now, in addition to students, I'm also asked by many foreign doctors looking to come to Canada whether or not they have to go ahead and write the MCCQE1. If you are unaware whether or not you as a doctor need to write this exam, I would highly suggest that your first step should be to sign up for a Physicians Apply account. And on that website, it'll go ahead and direct you as to the necessary steps if you are looking to come to Canada. Now, when it comes to the test breakdown, how the exam plays out, what's on the exam, I want to start off in saying that there is somewhat of a little bit of a misconception that goes on before people actually sit down and look at the breakdown for this exam and that people are often told that it is pretty much exactly like the American Step 2 exam. And I would like to say that that's not entirely the case. When we look at the breakdown for the MCCQE1, what we'll see is that the exam is basically broken up into two different sections. The exam itself is seven and a half hours plus one 45 minute break that you take all at the same time. It is a 45 minute consecutive break that is optional to you. But then the exam itself is broken up into two halves. The first part of the day is the multiple choice section of the exam. There are 210 multiple choice questions for which you are given four hours to do all 210 questions. Then you have your 45 minute optional break. And then the second half of the day is going to be 38 different case styled questions. And in these case styled questions are going to be multiple different question stems that branch off of a central case. You are given approximately three and a half hours for that second part of the exam. Now, just to further drive this home a little bit when it comes to the multiple choice questions, specifically, when I wrote the step one exam, there were 280 questions in seven one hour blocks. When you do that math, that works out to about one and a half minutes that you get per question. Whereas on the Canadian exam, it's less than that. I think it's about a minute and like seven seconds, five seconds that you get on average per question. Having said that, for the most part, it does still seem like there is a decent amount of time to complete the exam for most people. Now, at the same time though, tip number one is that for many students, the hardest part about this exam, especially the multiple choice, is sitting down for such a long time without any breaks in between answering questions back to back to back for like four hours. So I would highly recommend that when it comes to practicing the timing, really working on your endurance and being able to link together chains of questions in a row without burning out mentally is probably something that I would spend a lot of time on. Now, when it comes to what's actually tested on the exam itself, 
When we look back at my experience with step one, what I said immediately after that exam was that I strongly believe that individuals who trained under an American system were at somewhat of an advantage when it came to writing that exam. And I'll say that similarly, I think that the Canadian students are going to be at a little bit of an advantage here in writing this exam. And the reason being is because when you look at the MCC official website as to what is on the exam, it is broken down into seven different topics under what we call the CanMeds roles. These are seven different areas that all Canadian physicians physicians should try to employ when they are working as a doctor. The seven different roles are medical expert, collaborator, communicator, health advocate, leader slash manager, professional, and scholar. So what you should do if you are getting ready to see this exam, you want to see what's on it, go ahead and look directly at that website, see how the different things break down. What I would say to do first is to go and look at the medical expert section. This exam really is a clinical based exam for the most part. And although there are many different topics that you're going to be covering, um, it lists all the different pathology that you need to know. Everything from things covered in general surgery to OB to medicine to psychiatry are all going to be listed on that website, but it is a fairly uh, long breakdown that you should probably go take a look at. Now, when it comes to scoring and scoring breakdown, this is another thing that's going to be unique to the MCC exam. Technically speaking, the range of scores exists from anywhere between 100 and 400. 100 is the lowest score you could get. 400 is the hypothetical or theoretical maximum, but no one gets a score of 400. A passing score is a 226. The mean score is a 250 and the standard deviation is 30. And that's a lot of information to take in, but let's break it down just a little bit more. From a statistical standpoint, because the passing score is so close to the negative one standard deviation score of 200, 120, statistically speaking, it is way easier to fail this exam than the step one exam, for example, where in order to fail, that's only representing the bottom about 5% of test takers. On the other hand, though, if you pass this exam, you're never allowed to take it again. And that's great for Canadian students because we only need to pass this exam. Getting a high score doesn't really help us out at all because most of us will have written it once we've already matched into residency. But keep in mind that if you are an international medical graduate looking to match to a Canadian residency program, you are trying to get as high of a score as you possibly can. From what I've heard from different students, this could range between anywhere between a 260 and a 280 when it comes to a good score when applying as an international medical graduate. But this is also going to depend on what program you're getting into and how competitive that program is. Now, the last thing that I want to say about scoring is that when it comes to knowing how many questions you actually need to get right to pass this exam, there's no real way for us to know. And the reason is, is because similarly to the step one exams and the step two exam, there is a difficulty factor associated with the different questions and the different versions of the exam, which is another reason why even getting perfect on the exam hypothetically doesn't guarantee that you're going to get a 400. Having said all that though, I've heard guesses from different teachers and schools and representatives anywhere between the high 50s to the low 70s in terms of how many percentage wise of questions you need to get right to pass the exam. Now, when it comes to preparing for this exam, I'll talk about how I did it and I'll talk about the two different things that you need to keep in mind. And maybe we'll start there first. On the one hand, there are certain people that are only trying to pass this exam versus on the other hand, there are people trying to get the top score that they possibly can in order to get into a residency program. And the prep for those two different types of people needs to be very, very different. I think though the resources can be the same for the most part and there's only three resources that you need to know. The first thing that I think that you need or that I really wanted for myself was a text based resource, something that I could refer to when I came across questions that I didn't already know the answer to. And for that I went with the Toronto notes and I thought that the Toronto notes was the best choice and probably is the best choice for anyone looking to write this exam because it contains a lot of information that is very specific to the Canadian system in terms of ethics and legal issues. They have whole chapters of the book dedicated to that. And for the record, I don't think that people should be reading Toronto Notes cover to cover, but they should be using it as a resource to look up things they don't already know when they get things wrong. And I would recommend that you read through some of the more ethically gray areas specific to the Canadian system. Now, the next thing that you need, and this is going to be a big point of contention here, is a good question bank. The reason why it's difficult to talk about this, though, is because my number one choice for the question bank is going to be the official question banks that are supplied, that are available for purchase through the MCC. But just full disclaimer, these are overpriced as I've never seen a question bank as overpriced as this in all of my time as a student. And for what I am paying for, I thought that there wasn't really much bang for my buck. There were 
they're not very good question banks and I would love to give the MCC some feedback on this stuff in the future and help them develop a better product, but I just thought they were way too expensive for the material in there. Now, what I will recommend, however, and this is not a sponsored video at all, but it is what I used myself and in speaking with many of my classmates, it looks like this is the consensus for what is the best when it comes to this type of stuff is UWorld. And I used UWorld for step one. I'm using UWorld to study for step two. And I'm using the UWorld step two, or I used it to prepare for my MCC exam. I think that the UWorld question bank for step two is definitely value for money. There are great explanations when you get stuff wrong versus the MCC question banks don't have any explanations at all, whether you got something right or wrong, which is totally unacceptable by my standards at this point as a student. Now, one thing though, unfortunately, that I will have to recommend from the MCC is their practice exam, especially the ProLite exam. It is their less expensive of the two. It's also a half version of the exam. In the very least, I think that everybody should do that ProLite exam to prepare you for what the actual exam is going to be like. I think that when it comes to writing the Canadian actual exam, you should probably go ahead and do an official resource at least one time and I think value for money in terms of getting some familiarity with the platform that is the MCC exam, do that ProLite exam. That's my recommendation. Now schedules and preparing for the actual exam itself. If you are a Canadian medical student, on average, us Canadian medical students typically prepare. We're just trying to pass this exam anywhere between two weeks and four weeks of dedicated full-time studying is typically sufficient when you're just trying to pass that exam. I myself did about three weeks of dedicated full-time study and I felt pretty good after that. I thought it was definitely a decent amount of time for myself. And I think anyone else that's been doing fairly well in their medical training, you've been passing your exams for the most part, that should be a good time frame. Now, if you're trying to get as high of a score as possible on this exam, then you're looking at realistically between two and three months of full-time studying if possible, and you can take that full-time versus anywhere between four and six months if you still have other clinical duties and commitments and things that you need to do. My study plan though, for both different types of people though, and what I did for myself was number one, start off with Toronto notes or whatever resource you have, read through the ethics and all of the different um, softer sides of medicine when it comes to preparing for this exam, not really the medical facts. And as you're reading through those sections, you're making your notes on very specific things for the Canadian healthcare system and Canadian law and all of these little niche areas, also go ahead and at the same time, run through your question bank. No matter what question bank you end up choosing, do your questions in blocks of at least 40 or 50, string them all together. And whenever you get one wrong, the important thing is that you're doing the review afterwards. And that is when you're reading through, you see exactly where you got it wrong. Number one, if you're using UWorld, for example, it explains to you why it's wrong. But at the same time, if it's something that sounds a little bit ambiguous or something that you think might actually be slightly different to the Canadian system, then go to Toronto Notes and read that section of that topic that you're getting wrong pretty consistently. In my opinion, when it comes to passing this exam and doing well on this exam, it's going to come down to doing as many practice questions as you possibly can, learning from your mistakes, looking them up, and then towards the very end, within the last one to two weeks before the exam day, that's when you're gonna go ahead and do the MCC Pro Light exam, get a feel for what the actual exam will be like through being comfortable with Pro Light, take up your Pro Light exam, and then after that point there, depending on how you score, that's when you get to decide for yourself whether or not you think it is worth the investment of another MCC exam or an MCC official question bank, kind of use that ProLite exam that you take within the last one to two weeks as a gauge for how much more you need to prep going into the final one to two weeks. All right, everyone, and that's going to be it. So that is everything I think that I'm allowed to talk about for the exam anyways, and that should be able to help some people out. If you have any questions at all, things I left out, you could always go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. And I'm gonna try my best to answer everyone. One final thing that I'll say though, is because I had a lot of people ask me, you know, what's harder Canadian exams versus American exams. I think different people are going to have different advantages in the different ones. I will say that after, you know, writing it, I, I don't think it's an easy exam. I think that, you know, you really do need to take the time to prep for it, you know, especially if you're not used to those styles of questions. And that's why I say the question banks and doing questions over and over again are going to be the most high yield for raising your score as much as possible. But on that note, I will end by saying best of luck to everyone that's currently getting ready for it. I wish you all the best. I get my score back in like seven or eight weeks from now, which is a pain in the butt, but we're doing what we can to stay positive about it and feeling good. And we'll see you guys all in the next one. So everyone take care.